Mm-hmm. Welcome to the cookout. PVM, positive vibes may be. How you living? How you doing? This is Jetty A-Track. And this is Gnocchi. 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 If y'all know, y'all know. Anyway, we are here once again. It's Wednesday, 7 p.m. You know the time, you know the place. And thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us. Five Brown, what's going on with you, fam? See how well what's going on with you, King? I just got off of work not too long ago. So I got I got to share my meal with y'all. Y'all, man. But tonight we're going to have a special episode. And this episode is called The Friendship Business. We have a special guest today. A comedian by the name of Alan Massenberg. Pardon me if I got your name wrong, playboy. But, look. Speak it and he shall appear. I said hold me name and he hopped up in the live right now. Alan, we about to join you up in the live very soon, brother. I'm just going to set up the topic and pin it up for everybody who's going to be joining so they know how to get down with the groove without us interrupting the, the, the course of the conversation. You know what I mean? Bob Brown said, I'm bringing back biker shorts this summer. Get with me. Nope. But I salute you. Uh, let's see. The friendship business. You did. And let me tag the homie too. So that people can get with him. Massenberg. Hopefully. Hopefully. Dash, what's going on with you, fam? Pin the comment. All right. There we go. Are oh, we ready to rock? I got my sage, I got my water, I got my gnocchi. Nyok, and we about to go, we about to roll. Are they equivalent to the sundress? Oh, I see. Oh, here you go. Dash, where your invite at, man? Stop playing. Yo. Mr. Allen Massenberg, what's going on with you, King? Yo, How what's you up, doing? man? How y'all doing? Yeah, How you living? Man. I can't complain, man. I can't call it. I'm saying. Same day, you know what I'm saying? I can't complain at all, man. How y'all? Ah, good. We good. We living. We living groovy and we living great. You feel me? Right. Hey, don't mind me. I'm sending out a few invitations as we speak, guys. You know, that's oh, all. Uh, my, my mom in here. What up, mom? Oh, <laughs> shout out moms. We going to give our flowers to the lady who gave birth to this wonderful talent right here. We thank you. <laughs> Yo, my mom support everything I do, dog. If it's on, if it's online, she gonna watch. That's love. That's, <laughs> that's love right there. Uh, that's definitely love. <laughs> yeah. You know, man. Wait, but so I'm asking Vaughn because he talked about the men hoochie uh, shorts. Like, is that the new equivalent to the sundress now? Like, but. <laughs> 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 Yo, Jenny, it's been a hot thing though. Like, I. Every time I'm having a conversation with a lady, they mention the hoochie shorts. Bro, this is the thing about the hoochie shorts. They, I don't know, like, they've been around. Like, I don't know about y'all, but I all, like, for like the last at least six, seven, I've worn my shorts above my knees. Like, I haven't, my knees always been out. You know what I'm saying? Like, this ain't new to me. I've, I've been a hoochie daddy. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you like mine's has been above my knees, but they ain't been hoochie daddy above my knees. You know, <laughs> like a like a slight inch. Like so, I seen this one post earlier today where it was like describing the inch styles of of these hoochie pants, and it was just like, where's too much hoochie as opposed to like a regular short short? Like, <laughs> and I fell somewhere in the middle spectrum of like eight to nine inches because I'm just like, yeah, I like a like a, a nice little length on the thing. I don't want to sit down and feel like. My piece is about to fall out my shorts. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you good? As long as you got on underwear, dog. Like, what you, you free <laughs> I understand that, but my ideology still thinks, you know, even with the underwear, my thing is just going to bust out. Like, and I'm just going to be like, what the <laughs> <laughs> Right. <laughs> oh, man. My word. So, Alan, we brought you here today. Uh, via our EP, our executive producer, Kane, who 
with Dash came up with tonight's episode title, topic, and conversational piece, which is the friendship business. And basically, you know, we're talking about the balance of business and friendships. You know, something that Dash brought to my attention that is something that I was kind of aware of as far as our, our, our dynamic, but I wasn't really too focused on it until he brought it to my attention was that we primarily communicate through this platform, PVM. You know, mm -hmm. outside of PVM, we may call each other once in a while to, you know, to touch base and whatnot, but most of our conversation has to do with this platform, with, you know, what we're going to talk about, how we're going to approach topics, you know what I'm saying? If it's not just us being on live and, and flowing how we flow. So, correct me if I'm wrong, but what something that compelled this conversation was the question as to whether that would be a healthy uh, communication style amongst friends or whether that is something that, you know, we see ourselves in the middle of in terms of, you know, what may differentiate itself from what contemporary friendship is now understood to be. Yeah. Now, you're right. You're the nail on the call, man. Because that's where the gist of it was coming from, like trying to figure out if it was like a healthy dynamic. And we actually even went so far as comparing like how like Joe Button went through the whole situation with his former co-host, like as a reference to us. And I was just like, well, you know, like although me and you, we communicate mostly through here, we still have our friendship. Like this is just more beneficial to our business. Like to communicate both mostly on here because if we have the conversations on screen, we hopping on screen with nothing to say to each other or knowing exactly where we're going. And for us, like, it is that the hit of mystery there. Like, we know each other, but then we don't know each other or how we might react to certain situations. And there are times, like, where we catch each other off guard, like, by the things we say or how we may feel or react to a certain situation that may surprise the other. Where it's, it's really organic, guys, because, like, the surprise and the mystery is like, oh, shit, like, I really didn't notice about this guy. Like... Like it catches us off our, off guard, and that's like naturally organic for the show that we see is like a good factor as far as our conversation, and like it brings you guys more into the conversation, into the fold, and makes you makes you you know gravitate more to the conversation than you know just two guys up here just sharing conversation all the time. You know, so yeah. for us, I seen it how it's beneficial, but I also am mindful that. It isn't always beneficial in all relationships, but every relationship always doesn't require working with you for until, and that's a different dynamic in itself. And Alan, we know that you have a podcast as well that you have with your friend. So, like, I thought this was like a perfect way to like merge all the worlds and combine like multiple experiences and mindsets onto the topic. Yeah. Like my, 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 my podcast is uh called Proper Ebonics, you know what I'm saying? And me and my my man Kirk, I feel like I wouldn't talk to him I, I wouldn't talk to him as much if I didn't have the podcast. You know what I mean? Like yeah. like we have a good but like you know what I, I think you hit a you hit something right on the head. Like you said we wouldn't have nothing to talk about on the podcast. You know what I mean? So like I like I like going like we do. Our, we try to do it like weekly. Sometimes it's bi-weekly. But I like going um, a week and a half, two weeks without talking to him at all. Yeah. Letting a bunch of stuff happen in the world, thinking about things that's going on in the world, and then chopping it up with him because then the conversation is more in depth and detail because we got a lot to talk about. We weren't talking, you know what I'm saying? So we go in 2022. If you go two weeks of talking to somebody, you missed a whole <laughs> lot of stuff, you know. What I'm saying? <laughs> so so for us, I feel like. That's best for what we doing on the podcast. So like, yeah, we like, like we both do comedy. So like, I'll see him out in the comedy streets, and we'll we chop it up. You know what I'm saying? But like, we really don't have outside conversations. That's like personal stuff. You know what I'm saying? But like, I try to like, I would I wouldn't call him and be like, yo, did you see uh, the Johnny Depp trial? Like, it's not, I wouldn't even. I haven't. I haven't. I don't watch kind of. Not to Johnny Depp though. <laughs> I, just, I, I just thought about that because that's going on right now. But like. I wouldn't even text him that or call him that. I would wait till we get on the podcast to talk about it then. You know what I mean? That's when I feel like we can, you know, have an in-depth conversation. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm in the same way because I, I kind of treat Jetty like that. Like, it's, it's even times now where I won't go to Jetty's story sometimes. Like, mm -hmm. just because I want to keep that mystery or I might let it a day build up that way I can see, like, what he's 
done the last couple of days or what's been on his mind the polls and just you know try to think of a topic or an idea from there or even like a conversation starter from there you know like it's yeah. certain things like i won't even it's certain things now where i won't even comment on like or make a like where i used to be like i hop on twitter and say my piece about it or i hop on facebook and give my little say look for about different topics i won't even say my, my piece until I actually have Jackie on the screen. That way we can flush it out together. Like, yeah. I'm just like, you know what? I want to hear his feedback on it. I want to hear how he's going to react to what I'm saying. And I just don't even want to ruin the content that we could possibly create together. Like, by just jumping out the gun and just giving my piece on it, you know? Yeah. No, I'm the, I'm the same. I'm the same way. I'm the same way. So, um, question. So, have you... Do you feel that the dynamic sometimes, I don't want to say suffers, but do you feel that there are difficulties sometimes in the dynamic between you and your co-host because the primary means of communication is this, as opposed to if you had, you know what I'm saying, the balance of, you know what I mean, calling them up every day and hands. I don't want. I don't want to talk to him that much. Like, I want. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's my guy. I, I love him, but we we talk. I feel like that's. A, I don't talk to many people that much. You know what I'm saying? So it's like that good hour, hour and a half that we get to talk for a while. Like even after we're done the episode, like we'll stop the recording and we'll keep talking for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? But like I feel like that's a that's a that's enough. Like. Yeah, I'm, I'm good with that. You know what I'm saying? I, don't, I love him to death. But anytime you want to talk, we can talk. But I'm good on That's enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel you on that. That's, that's, <laughs> that's some real stuff. Because it is in depth. Like, it is like the our conversations are like almost, I, I pick like the equivalent of like two weeks of real time face to face interactions. Because like, even like the in depth part of how we attach it into feelings and everything is just like more than the average friend gives to a, no a normal friend on a day by day basis or a week by week basis. Because there are a lot of friends I go months without sharing words with. But when we link, we link. You know, it's just like picking up a bike and riding it again. Like we picked up right exactly where we left off and it's just gone. And then there are other friendships where, you know, let me take two weeks off and I almost don't know this person again. Right. <laughs> and we kind of got to get reacquainted with one another. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Yeah, you ain't going to gonna cover your backside with a comment. I seen what you did. Mama <laughs> Massenberg definitely aired you out. She said that you don't talk to her that much, man. I told you. I have a, listen, I got a problem with that. And I realized... Now I realized recently, my cousin told me, my cousin was like, you just like your dad. Like, my dad don't call nobody. He don't talk to nobody. You got to call him when he got time. He's not tired. And I feel like as I get older, I'm turning into that. And I realize it. So I'm trying to, like, I don't want to be that. So, like, mom, I'm sorry I don't call you enough. I know I don't. That's just my fault. <laughs> it's, it's, it's your baby dad's fault because I'm like him. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. I, yo, honestly, I'm the same way. Honestly, I feel like, um, like for example, there's a couple of aunties, one that called me last week, the other that called me two months ago, and I love them. Mm -hmm. It is no love lost. I love them. But, you know, it's easy for me, especially in this juncture in my life right now, it's easy for me to just to, to, to find myself really engaged in my groove. You know what I mean? And it's not like I forgot about them neither. But sometimes I am over cerebral and I'll be like, yo, I'm gonna I'm call them, I'm gonna call them when it comes to this time or whatnot. Because like I know what communication is. Communication is an exchange of energy. So it's not I don't wanna call you and it's just like oh you know I know that the conversation like if you have something that you wanna tell me, but my, my capacity ain't there. Like if I called you and my capacity is five minutes but you want to shoot this shit for an hour, I'm going to feel bad. But yeah. it'll be like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I don't know, man. No, I think I think you're right about that. The, the um, transfer of energy is a big thing. Because, like, you you know we all got those homies and family members that always got something going on. And when you talk to them, they're going to tell you about it. And you just be like, ah, oh, man, I don't feel like being drained sometimes. You know what I mean? And, and, and vice versa. 
when you got stuff, and then you like, I don't want to put this on people. I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, burden people with my problems. You know what I'm saying? So. Okay, I lost it. Yo, I lose y'all. Yeah, we probably I yeah. lost. It. Yeah, we still got you a little bit. We got you a little bit though. Yeah, now, now I'm about to, I'm about to park in like two oh, minutes. Man, when I park, then I have. Uh, I like, I actually like where you was going because, like, you're right. There are those friends that, um, there are like almost, I, I don't want to say a drain, but they are draining, you know, to you, you know, when you hear all about the complaint. Because I know for a fact, I'm one of those people. Like, you call me with your problems, and you. And it's too much for me that day. I ain't really trying to hear it, you know, like, because it always seems like the bad news come when you feeling the best of best. Like, you on cloud 10, like, yeah. the, the, the wind is blowing, you feeling good, and here comes somebody want to, you know, cry all over, all over the sunshine, just like, oh, let me, let me tell you how my day was so hard. Well, it's like, what the dog? Like, you ain't even bother to ask me how I'm feeling. Like, do I, do I need to be hurting with this, with this issue? Right now, like right now, like you gotta hit me with it. So it's just like I don't know. I'm I'm being mindful of that, like even you know, with like my daily day interactions with people, like like you know how when you answer the phone, you could pick up on somebody's energy, like you know if they're like in a good or a bad mood. So like I'm being mindful of that, like when I'm having my phone interactions, with my phone, and I'm just like like once I hear that tone, it already lets me know at least now like whether i'm going to commit to like sharing my burden or just like you know just shooting the shit with you you know and it's been times lately even like where i wanted to get some shit off but you know like i just heard the person tone and i'm just like it ain't too much of a good move for me to run the rain on their parade let me, <laughs> let me just keep my shit to myself like and i'll just be like yo what's going on with you like and try to use what's going on in you that's not good for you to like try to help me get to my blues you know in a way. Right. Right on, right on. You know what I mean? That African butterfly, what's going on with you, love? Miss Luminous, what's going on with you, love? Everything up in here, we appreciate y'all. So, but to continue the conversation, though, Dan, there was a question that you had for everybody in attendance regarding the topic tonight. Could you um, could you bring that to the forefront? Uh, yes. I actually had that written there over there. All right, so I got a couple questions. So I'm going to just shoot the one that's on my head right now, and I'll, I'll leave to y'all pull up my other one. But how do you guys um, feel like the friendship work dynamic can be more effective? Like, do you feel like at some point uh, fr the lines of friendship can blur the lines of business as far as, like, productivity and expectations of one another? Where like you might be less demanding of your friend than you would be of a partner who is strictly there for business. Yeah, I think so. Like, like I, I see, I see it. Like, so, uh, you know, I think the hardest part is like you when your friend does something wrong. As opposed, like, say you got a business, your friend. Or, like, can be a you know what I'm saying? Because you don't want like that's your, that's your homie. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't want to talk down to them, but it's kind of like yo, I got a business to run. You know what I mean? So I feel like that could that could be a little tricky. So it could be probably harder to have your friend working for you or working with your friend than it could be like a stranger. Like a stranger, you be like, hey yo, this is what gotta happen, and it is what it is. Like, but your friend, you kind of yeah. use like you kind of you know got like cautionary gloves on. You like I don't want to throw them off or like it's my homie. So or you might ask less of them because they're your homie. You know what I'm saying? A regular dude on the street, if I'm paying, if I'm paying, yo, this is what you do. You, 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 gotta, you gotta do this. But it's like my homie, like, I know you like, I don't really want, you know what I'm saying, like, put all this on your plate, you know what I'm saying? So, like, I think it could be a little harder working with your friends and a stranger, you know? Mm -hmm. I agree with that. I agree with that. Um, I was actually talking to my, um, I was talking to my lady before we got on here. I was just talking about a past situation with a homie, and you know, just like the things and the way that he would get things off of his chest. And I was letting her know, I was like, you know what? If it wasn't for the fact that I cared for him, I wouldn't even care. Like, I would be irritated. Absolutely. I would absolutely be irritated. 
I would absolutely be annoyed. You know what I'm saying? I would absolutely be frustrated. But, you know, I don't know you. So at the end of the day, I could drop you like this or I could just turn my back on like this. That's cool. But the fact that I care for you, I care about you, it brings that hurt. And it's just like, yeah, I got I to gotta tread carefully with the way that I talk to you because if it gets to that point, now we're getting to the point of no return. And I do care about you. You know what I mean? So I feel you coming from with that. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's a big thing because that's actually falling in line with my, my next question. is just like, what if, what if things do fall over to the point where, like, the relationship does have to sever? You know, because that's a big thing. Like, and it is always a question that's in the back of my mind. And it even was a question, like, in the back of my mind, like, regarding us, as far as, like, that trepidation of, do I want to partner with my friend? Like, logically speaking, ideology-wise, of course I wanted to. Like, it was like a no-brainer. It was like, of course. Who else would I want to talk to but my actual people? Like, it makes the most sense. But, like, I'd be lying to you, Jenny, if I didn't tell you, like, there, there haven't been times, like, prior to. And even during now where I worry, like, you know what? The more we do this, the more we grow. I see, I see us suspending. I see where we're going. But, you know, I also can see, I also am cognizant of where we can fall and, like, how many things can get in our way. Like, and that's why I used to do a button situation with his friends because I'm just like, I'm, I'm mindful of that because I was a fan of the show. So I have knowledge of seeing how they started and seeing, like, the love, the, the true friendship there. And then over time, seeing, like, this is where the business took you. And it's just like, at the end of the day, like, do I want the business or do I want the friend? Like, you know, and that do play in the back of my mind, like, you know, could that line ever blur or where it would mess up where it would suffer a friendship? And if the business do separate, how do you maintain the friendship at that point? How do you say, okay, like, look, business, we, we didn't work out as partners, but the friendship is good, like, because it is hard to, like, fuck with a person money and then say, yo, let's be boys. Without you holding some type of resentment, harbor, or even, like, the slightest bit of animosity of, like, it could be as simple as, like, yo, you fucked up the business, or, like, that, that was my dream and you fucked it up. So I'm looking at you all the time as you're the person who messed up my goals, my dreams. You know, that's a, I don't know. Like, where, what's your feels on it? I feel like, um, see, I want to use the Joe Bud situation again because you brought it up and because I saw something. And Charlamagne the God actually pointed this out. And when I saw it, I knew that this shit wasn't going to last long. I knew it wasn't going to last long. The Joe Budden podcast before it was called the Joe Budden podcast was called I'll Name This Podcast Later. I heard that before, yeah, because he was on there when he was talking about that. I remember that. Right. And, it, and that was a while. That that had, like, at least, like, maybe, like, close to 100 episodes, if not over 100 episodes. I'll name this podcast later. I'll name this podcast later. It was so much to the degree that it made, like, it just made sense. It actually sounded like a dope name. It was just like, you'll never name the podcast, but every episode I'll name <laughs> It, it kind of gave you an incentive to watch it because it's like, will he ever name the podcast? You know what I'm saying? Real talk. The minute he named it his podcast, the Joe Budden podcast, I knew it wasn't going to last. And at that point, that's where, that's where, um, you know, that's where you got to be able to be up on your shit business-wise. You know what I mean? Like, for example, I, I believe that there is the the distinction that can exist between you know friends and business but you have to be able to read the writing on the wall i feel like with ma and with rory they seen the writing on the wall and they were still just playing the, they were just still playing oh yeah we still going we still going to blend the world no nah. and then you start seeing the writing on the wall has to finish straight so that when we get to this point we can still be cool because I got mine, you got yours. Instead of me investing, like, I feel like where, where, where people mess up, where friendships mess up in business is when you invest with the heart of a friend in in the arena of business, pit bulls. You know what I mean? You're investing with the heart of a friend, like, yo, my man won't do that. Whole time, he's on his business shit. 
So he's like, yo, it's cold, it's cold this, like it's semantics this, it's contract this. You know what I'm saying? If you don't read the writing on the wall, you end up messing yourself up. And then blaming somebody else yeah. for your for your downfall. Real. And that's that's real. And uh, I don't see that's uh, that's probably where my biggest divide is at. Like, how do you broach that conversation with your friend? Or do you even broach that conversation with your friend in business? Or is that shit that should be something instinctually known, like amongst both parties, like or all the parties included, you know? Because I do feel like I'm gonna use that situation just for for this sake, you know? Like that situation could have been remedied with a simple conversation of, yo, like our friendship is our friendship, but our business is our business, you know? And I'm treating you guys when we're doing this. Like this is a business, so move with that mindset. But should you initially initially just have that mindset, just going into it? Because like I can see how it can easily be like, yo, that's my man. He wouldn't do nothing to to you like that. But at the same time, like that was something I was scared about, like going in with us, like, and we never had that conversation of like, yo, like treat this like a business. I just kind of assumed like that, just based off our relationship, you would just naturally assume like. Like treat this like a business, and we will move accordingly. Like our friendship is our friendship, but our business is our business, because that's how I treat it. But we also never had that conversation, so I can't see how like that clarity would be mixed up. You know, where you thinking like, all right, this is my friend, and then when business time come around, you looking at him sideways because he's just like, but you my man's though, like, like yeah. you know, we started this off together, like you know, what I bring to the party because you wouldn't even have. You know, roast this partnership had you not known what I brought to it. You know? That's why a conversation in the beginning is important, bro. Like that'll save you a lot of headaches. You just had that conversation in the beginning, and that's that's why a lot of my business ventures I do it by myself because I got an ego and I want all the credit. <laughs> <laughs> I respect that. I respect that. I respect it. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> Cause that's another question I got. Like, how much ego ego should you bring into a partnership with your friend? Because we we all know those people who are like super, you know, I'm that boy. Like, I got the spotlight got to shine on me whenever I enter the room, you know. And there's some people that's comfortable with falling back. But how does that divide work, you know? Like, when it's too much, you know? Because it can, but it can't, you know? Like. If ego steps into play, and and you know one person may feel like okay, my partner get more shine than me on the project, or like even I'm gonna use us for example, Jetty. Like for example, let's say I was catching feels like because everybody gravitated towards you, and I'm sitting back still and just like damn, nobody fucking with my ideology, you know? Like <laughs> so now I'm better. And like, Yo, why you know, I'm you ideology? Hold on, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why Alan laughed at ideology. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not even sure why I did. It was just funny. I didn't think he was going to say that. It was just like my ideology. I don't know. I just felt like Dr. Umar was on live with me. <laughs> <laughs> my ideology, brother, is that. <laughs> All right, my bad, Dad. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. <I'm sorry. laughs> If we stick together as a per as a people, the ideology of the process. I don't know. I just felt like Malcolm X about to come through the phone. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. I've been watching like these Dr. Umar TikTok videos lately. <laughs> See, <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I've been talking to my soul. Like <laughs> I ain't gonna hold you. Umar, be, listen, he be having some points, though. He be having some points, yo. He do, like, he be making some points, but I'm just like, you know what? He, he not wrong. Like. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> but for yeah. real, like, I could just see how that partnership could just, you know, fester, and, like, egos could just get into the way just out of pure jealousy, you know, of yeah. all things, you know. And it could be over the smallest things, like, whether it's popularity, you know, money, or even just just feeling insecure in who you are and just being like, uh, like as a person, oh, I'm not doing this as much as they do, you know, and your own insecurities factor in into way, you know. So I'm I'm just mindful of that and I'm just asking like, how do you guys manage that? Like how do how do you guys even like manage the ego aspect of like I don't wanna be 
too egocentric, but I also don't want to take a step back from this is my business. Like, so I'm I'm putting all of me in it. Like, yeah, I, I haven't figured it out yet. I like I just told y'all, <laughs> like I uh. I I be I be by myself like, like like my girl she she helps with like a lot of the behind the scenes stuff that I do like I produce like not only am I a comedian but like I produce comedy shows you know what I'm saying so it's like wherever like all up and down the East Coast you know what I'm saying so it's like she helped me with the behind the scenes stuff but like it's my it's my name on it like I'm a comedian like I stand on the stage by myself I want attention from everybody I want everybody look and laugh at me you know what I'm saying so I haven't figured out the way to put my ego aside and like collab with another like another comedian on a business venture like like my business is, is mine you know what i mean like I, don't, I haven't gotten there yet i don't know if i one day i will but right now it's just like i'm in a spot where it's like i feel like i know what's best for what i'm trying to do and no nobody really understands that like besides my girls like, that's who i talk to like about it you know what i'm saying and like yeah people just don't like i've been and business with people and people just don't be having the same kind of ground that I have or they got a different schedule that I have. It's just easy for the way my life is set up for me to just do it by myself right now. You know what I'm saying? So like, yeah, it's ego, but also it's just like convenience and trust. You know what I mean? Like, uh, so that's why I do a lot by myself. I want to add to, um, to what you just, to, to what you said regarding our dynamic here at PVM. And there's something that we have where it's like, you know, you eat what you kill, right? Mm -hmm. So basically, you know, if Dash were to, if Dash were to, um, to establish, you know, what I mean, a, a conversation with a guest or a potential guest, you know, what I mean, he would moderate, mm -hmm. and, and I would, I would play backup. I would ad lib. I would pick up, you know, what I mean, wherever I would see fit to pick up, and I would, I would be the, 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 the supplement, if you will. You know what yeah. I mean. Vice versa, you know what I'm saying? If I'm the one that, that picks out a conversation with a, a potential guest or whatnot, I would moderate, and then Dash would be the support, you know what I mean? Right. I like on to, you know what I'm saying, like if, you know, if we all homies and, you know what I mean, let's say, Alan, you, 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 your, your family got like a cookout or some type of function, right? And then you invite us. We not going to walk into your crib like we own the spot. Because right. we're going to your crib, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So with that, we kind of acquiesce to what it's going to be because we know where we're going, you know what I mean? It's not about us. It's about you, you know what I mean? So I put that in the same conversation, in the same context as far as, like, let's say a bag gets thrown to Dash, right, of PVM, but the bag gets thrown to Dash. I got to play my role. You know what I mean? Because it, if they wanted to throw the bag to both of us, we both would have been in the room. Right. You know what I'm saying? But if the bag goes to him, I have to acquiesce. I have to play my role because whatever he wants to do with the bag in regards to PVM is what he wants to do with the bag in regards to PVM. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, yeah, I hear that. I'm glad you said that, like, how you said it too, Jeremy, like, as acquiesce. I was actually watching this interview earlier uh, today with Fat Joe. He was on some podcast, and he was talking about just the roles friends don't have or take up when they're building up their friends. And he was talk He was using himself and DJ Khaled as an example. And he was just like, yo, when I'm with DJ Khaled, Khaled is more popular than me. Khaled make more money than me. So when I enter the room, I'm Khaled security. I'm whatever Khaled need me to be so he can be the best version of him. So he was just like, when he on stage performing, I'm security. You can't get past me to get to him. Like, right. And he was just like, friends don't understand. Like, yo, I got to play my role. Like, sometimes you're not the chief. Sometimes you're the guy who, who filling up the cups of water. Sometimes you grab the towel, making sure your ball is good. Like, you got to access the roles to benefit the team. Like, if, if you really down with this guy, why wouldn't, you know, you, you, you know, acquiesce to it. Like, you know, become an active participant and helping this person take it to the next level because them elevating is only going to turn make you elevate. You know? Facts. And I was just like, that's something, that, that was something that stood out to me because I was just like, that's real. And I kind of used that as like an example, like even with us, Jetty, and I started like, as he was talking about, I was thinking about to myself, like, do I do that for my homies? Like, and do, do my homies do that for, for me? And like a couple 
things came to my mind, I was like going back to like even my first poetry performance, how you and Chef kind of walked me step by step throughout the process. Like, and I thought about myself, like how much y'all put me at ease throughout that day. Like from the time y'all just spent with me rehearsing before the show, like talking me down, talking my nerves, you know, you giving me tips on, yo, Dash, you should probably drink this so your voice would be smooth when you perform and, you know, like telling me how I should hold the mic, you know, giving me ideas and things I wasn't even thinking about, but because y'all had my back and y'all had my best interest, you guys already came prepared to already, you know, uplift me. And I just thought about like, when I, the things I do for y'all, like whenever y'all in studio session just passing out work, like even if it's like small shit, like that stuff adds up, but like people don't understand it. Like sometimes I gotta play that little role. Like that little role is so significant to the greater success of everything, but it just goes undenounced, unsaid. Like yeah. you, you're appreciated by the person who you're giving it to. Like, but sometimes it just doesn't need to be said. Like you just need to know as a friend, this is my role, or this is why I need to adapt to make this person, you know, whole. Y'all watch basketball? Y'all basketball fans? Oh, of course. You know what? Wardell Curry getting his ring this year. Poor so look, I was, that's what I was about to mention. I was about to mention the Warriors. Like, um, Draymond Green is the perfect example of, like, a team player. You know what I'm saying? Like, he understands his role, what he got to do. Like, if he got to assist, if he got to rebound, play defense, he going to do what he has to do to make the Warriors better. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you know, that's that's what I feel like a good friendship in business is. You know what I'm saying? Somebody that's going to play. He said Boston in seven. No way. But he said, like, somebody's no. going to, like. You got, Warriors in six. <laughs> We're going to win, but everybody got to be that that, that Draymond Green and the, the crew. And everybody got to do what they got to do to make the team better. You know what I mean? So, yeah. yeah. And I like – using the words as an example, I like them because I like their mindset. And I actually even, like, I go back to, like, this quote I heard Ikadala say, like, a couple years ago. With this this back, like, probably, like, 2015, 2016. But he was talking about the dynamic of the team, and he was just like, I don't even play for myself at this point. He was like, I play for Steph Curry. He was just like, that's our superstar. He was like, my job on that floor is to make sure he looks like a superstar every night. So right. if I got to do the dirty stuff of getting rebounds still so he can take a big shot here and there for us to win, that's my role. And I was just like, yeah, like, that's a big part of friends and business, like understanding yep. your role and being okay and a star in your role. Like, you don't have to be the lead singer to be a star in your role. Like, it's been mad, you know, highlights of guys that's just been superstars in their role, like Draymond Green. Like, he does the little stuff, but you know who he is because he shines in that role. Right. Like, you can have that phenomenal background singer that, you know, every time they hit a note, you're just like, damn, that shit hard. Like, I ain't gonna lie. When I listen to Alicia Keys' song, Diaries, the bull singing at the end, he be stealing it for me. Like, yeah, that's yeah. the background singer. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like so I'm just like you can you can bring a minimal part to the party and still shine just as long as you're willing to shine in that role. Like, but you gotta be you gotta be comfortable and willing to want to shine in that role. Like if you if you picking it up and you just like I don't really want to do this, you're not going to sell in it. You know, it's impossible because you're not even giving that effort to to a sell. Like, it's already half hearted from the start. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So my that's what I said to y'all, like my, my girls, she like my she like my Andre Igadala. She just looked better. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Yo. Uh, <laughs> I like that. Yo. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying like she 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 my cute Draymond. <laughs> oh my goodness, yeah. <laughs> oh man. And that's needed though too. Because you need somebody to have the battery in your back. Right. <laughs> that goes unsaid a lot. Like, people don't tell their success stories, like, too much mentioning the batteries in the back for people that, you know, kept motivating them during the time of rest. Like, we be yeah. giving props to people being like, oh, yeah, you overcome this, you overcome that. Yeah, I overcome it, but I also had people in my corner, like, right. telling me, yo, you can do it. Like, you can do it. Like, no right. one takes it to the next level by themselves, although we like to say they did it by themselves. It's a fact. You might have done the bulk of the work alone, but it was somebody in your corner championing you on, you know, waving the pom-poms when you was feeling a little tired to, like, uplift your spirits. Like, And then you find motivation in those around you, too, because, like, I won't lie, like, you know, like, 
for instance, I'm sure like your lady inspires you to want to be better. Like, I'm sure like when you're doing your thing, yeah. you're like, yeah, I'm doing my thing, but you know, my lady love it, it makes me want to go even 10 times harder. Like, not Thanks. only to impress her, but to support her. Like, dog, you know what y'all be thinking too? If, if I didn't go hard, I just want to sound crazy. If I didn't go hard and she still rocked with me, I would look at her like, Yo, you, you like me? I just chill like this. Like, <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> no, that's real. No, that's real. <laughs> that's real shit. It's one thing that I genuinely appreciate with my circle, with my lady, and it's like the the keep it funky energy. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Because I'm not going to be my best. I'm not going to be better than I was yesterday. I'm not going to be a sharp sword if the only thing anybody in my circle does is for every little thing I do and shit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Gotta be impressive. I just open my mouth and yawn. Mm. <laughs> right. Like, thank, good job showing your teeth. Good job. Like, no, nah, man. Like, <laughs> I'm just being lazy. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. You want to be challenged. You want to be pushed. You're like that creates the that, that helps you grow. That helps you expand. Like, I don't need you cheering me on if my shit suck. Like. Then I'm wondering around like why nobody supporting it like real shit. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Now it's the it's the exact it's the exact opposite with my kids though. You know what I mean? Like if I if I like if I'm going too too hard, they'll bring me back down to earth. They're like, yeah, you're not even funny like that. I don't know why you doing all these shows. <laughs> like, they bring you back down there like my girl. But like, keep going. My kids be like, can you stop? Can you just stop? <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> but that's needed too. Like you need to come with all like that. that counts with it. Like, cause you're a comedian, so you cut, you get the good with the bad, you know. Like, and you do need those to be like, you know, that that door there hit you. Cause I'm sure it, it probably in the back of your head, be like, you know, I'm about to write some fire and shit, man. I'm like, so they lower asses up, like, cause that's... I ain't gonna hold you. The fact that you said that remind me of like my nephew. So I do poetry. And there's times mm -hmm. where I'm like writing poems in the room and I might be reciting some stuff and he in the room playing with his drums, you know, get his little drum on. And I say something and he might look at me and I know if it's fire or if it's not by the way he look at me. Like he'll give me like a yeah. smile. Like if, if I said something that caught his attention and that was fire, he'd be like, but when it's trash, he just look at me and just, just <laughs> like kind of avoid eye contact. I'm just like, oh. Let me like this, like, this is card. This this is totally card. Like, like you're not even my uncle anymore. Yeah. <laughs> like I embarrassed him. So I'd be like, can't show nobody that one. Like, right. Oh shit. Not even a baby like that one. Like, <laughs> oh man. I right, so ask a somewhat redundant question, but I'm only asking this so that we can like we can explore and delve into certain realities that just work logistically and such. Because even though you've expressed that you find it hard to collaborate because of your ego, you still have a team. You have your lady, you have your kids, you have your mom, and they're not in your field, but they fuel you in a way with their egos as well that it's not like your egos are colliding like this and trying to fight for attention, but it's like it's like y'all sharpening and polishing each other. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So in in that, I want to ask you: Do you find it? Do you find that uh, the way that you approach your business is easier for you to to talk to people outside of comedy in order for you to get business done? Or do you find yourself still having to network within the um the the comedian um chitlin circuit? You know what I'm saying? So for for my business business, when it comes to like comedians, like I don't need none of these niggas. Like I don't uh like I, 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 I don't. But for the business that I'm running, like for, right. as a comedian, I do need I do need the for comedians to put me on their shows. Like I need for like comedians to like put me down like give me booker's email address so i can email these. like i need the help when i'm doing comedy but like when it comes to my business that i'm doing for like my my money money no it ain't i don't really need the help of comedians it's, it's my business is comedy 
but I don't need the comedians to help with the production of shows. I mean, like, so I'll, I'll book, like, I'll book comedians like, yo, bro, I, here's this amount of money, come to this city, do this amount of time. That's as much as working with someone as I'll do for my business. And if, if don't nobody want to come make some money with me, then I'll just make it all by myself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, but like having people like my circle, none of my circle is in comedy. Like I only been doing comedy. This is, I'm in my seventh year. So I'm 34 years old. So I got 27 years of relationships without comedy. You know what I'm saying? So it's like the close people to me, they're not comedians. So it's like my ego is still intact when I ask them for help or when not, cause they're not in my, they're not in my field. Like I'm not going to even lie to y'all. I'm being open and honest with y'all. If I don't know if I have it in me right now to like reach out to a comedian for advice right? or, or like reach out to an old head. Like, yo, can you help me with like, I don't even know if I have it in me yet. Cause I'm still like, I'm, I don't know. Like I just, I love the fulfillment of like, yo, I did this and I know I, I got to get over that. I got to get over that. Cause I know it's kind of, it hurts me. I can be farther with the help of the community, but I just love it when I get it done from the muscle. Like, I don't know what it is. Like, it's just who I am right now. You know what I mean? So it's like, if my circle is not in comedy, it's probably what's best for me, what I'm doing right now. So, yeah. I, feel like I can relate to that. And I think, I think that's something like that's just ingrained in us, ingrained as, in us as men, like they just want to grab it out the mud. Like, cause even like using PVM as an example, like we, we are independent by choice. Like, like we actively are really shopping around like different spots. Because we do want that independence. We do want that ownership. Uh, and that responsibility of saying, look, we started this. We create, we control the narrative. We control how this will be dictated and presented to everyone. So, like, with that said, like, we want all the influence. Like, I'm not trying to give you what I worked hard to build, like, mm -hmm. especially after we built it up. Like, hey, if you want to come right. partner with us, yeah, you know, we can talk. But, like, at the same time, like, how you said, like, our egos are in play, you know. Like, we, we probably could be better if we reach out to other people and be like, yo, like, you know, guide us, it, for for instance. But at the same time, we want to take these lumps. Like, we, we're we taking the lumps of understanding so, like, in time, we'll be better because of it. You know? mm -hmm. And I think yeah. as men, we kind of we kind of got that by nature. Like, we want to do our own thing. Like, it is important to us as men to be like, yo, I did this. Like, I, I think, you know, as, as you say the same thing, I realize, like, I know, I think, I'm pretty sure... I don't want to get too deep on y'all, but I'm pretty sure that's a trauma response. The whole, it might be. It like, might be. It, it really might be. Like the whole, the whole. I want, I want, I want to do it from the muscle. I could do it by myself. That's just a trauma response. That's, just, that's a response to never having help. Like that's just. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's all that is. Like you, you haven't had the adequate help you were looking for as a kid, so you figured out how to get it from the mud, from the muscle by yourself. You know what I'm saying? So, man, I gotta go to therapy. Uh, like that. <laughs> yo, that's what I'm talking about. Right? And, and, and that's actually why I took a pause from therapy for a while because stuff was getting too real. Just like every conversation, <laughs> I was seeing the deeper meaning of things. I'm just like, you know what? I just need to be ignorant for a little bit longer. <laughs> just for a little bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> Look, bro, I feel you because my I feel like my jokes are better than the worst I am. Does that make sense? Like, <laughs> no, like, I understand. I understand. I feel like I could create more from a place of ignorance. I, I was still like, I was getting so enlightened that I was seeing the deeper meaning and stuff where I couldn't see the simplicity of things and just let it be. Like, I was just yeah. like, oh. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm searching for the deeper meaning too much. Let me just allow life to teach me a little bit more. Like, and then I can right. go back when I, when I feel like I need to, I'm not learning the lesson. Hey, I want to say this, though. It, it might be a trauma response, but let's not take away the positivity in this shit, because I liken it to, like, Pokemon. Walk with me now. Walk with me. <laughs> Walk with me. Walk with me. This is why I liken it all to Pokemon, right? Now, imagine, right? Y'all you, you, both play Pokemon, right? I have. So, no, so y'all so know what time it is. It's like, you know, the gym leaders, like, you go to a gym, it's like a grass gym or it's like a water gym or an ice gym or whatever. And they mm -hmm. primarily have this type of Pokemon, right? Right. And it's like, my nigga, uh, you're powerful, sure. But y'all all do the same shit. Like, why the fuck would I want to be a part of y'all shit when all of y'all niggas do the same shit? Like, mm -hmm. I already do this. 
So if I let's say I'm a psychic trainer, so I like psychic Pokemon. All right, cool. I can like psychic Pokemon. But if all I have is psychic fucking Pokemon, all it takes is somebody to have my weakness and they just gonna come up the red. Nigga, right. nah, let me get a grass. Let me get a fire. Let me get a water. Let me get let me get variety and shit. You know what I mean? Other basically I'm saying other people that don't do what I do helps to make the team that much more stronger instead of just like being in like a, a situation where we all do the same shit. We all rap. Or we right. all do comedy. Or all we all do podcasting. Or we all do whatever and shit. Cause like how much will I really get to know if we all doing the same shit? Like No, that's that's a good that's a really good point, dog. Like and taking it back to basketball. It's like we don't need five Steph Curries on the team. You know what I'm saying? You need a big man. <laughs> <laughs> He's a facilitator, so that makes perfect sense, though. That's a good analogy right there. Yeah, yeah that is. That's a perfect analogy right there. Like, cause that's true. Like, you don't, and, and the diversity is needed. Like, that helps. That's what helps in sharpen the other knives. Like, you doing what you do is gonna allow me to do what I do even better. Cause you gonna allow me that freedom. Cause I know, okay, I don't even gotta worry about that. That's all you. You know, he got that on lock. So now I can prioritize and make more of a focus of what I need to focus on. Which is gonna be even better, you know, and it allows the next person to just feel more comfortable doing what they are comfortable doing, which just makes the unit even stronger. Because right. you really only as strong as your weakest link. So if your weakest link feel confident in what they're doing, and you put them in a position to succeed, hey, how you gonna lose? Facts. Mm. Mm. You know, it's really strength in numbers, just like the Warriors said. Like, <laughs> bringing it back to basketball. It's cool. We about to get Dr. Umar the fuck up out of here. I vote for Dash. <laughs> we about to get Umar the fuck up out of here. Oh, yeah. I mean, we can. You know, we moving in. Like, PBM, positive vibes, maybe. You know, <laughs> not a guarantee, not a possibility, just maybe. You know, got to save room for hope. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but um Alan Massenberg, we are rounding up on the hour point of our episode. Before we even get to the end portion of it, we want to give you your flowers. We thank you so much for this conversation, for joining us, for for being with us and for sharing so much of your, your personal matters on this conversation piece right here. We thank you, we appreciate you, we send our love to you. And um you know, before we even close out, I know that Dash would like to uh, to add a few things that we like to wrap up the end of our conversation with before we even get to our tradition. So, Dash, take it away, please. Oh, gotcha. So, before we even do that, Alan, got to give you a shout out because we actually ran into you prior to COVID and you were doing a performance. Uh, I forgot the location, but it was like at this cafe. Uh, they were doing like poetry, dancing. And yeah, you told oh, um, Caramia. Caramia was hosting. Uh, I know. I, I remember that. I mm. figured. I, I thought. I thought that was where I met y'all. That I remember that. Yeah. I think that was the night I met Kang too. Yes. Yes. Yeah. He performed. Yes. It's, yes. It's, 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 <laughs> yeah. I remember that. I, I really. I really enjoyed his performance. And ever since. Ever since that day, I. I told him. He asked me. He was like, "Is it cool if I like send you new music and stuff?" You check it out, and I was like, definitely, bro. Like, I really enjoyed his set. So, like, yeah, from time to time, he'll send me like his YouTube videos and his album. Not listen to it and saying, I, I really, I really, I really, um, I, I bang with his music, dog. And so when he said you want to come on the show, I'm like, definitely. Like, I'm, I'm on there. I mean, I, I don't, I don't like getting on IG live really because I'm, I'm missing a side tooth and I don't want people seeing it. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, other than that, man, this was a good, <laughs> good time, man. <laughs> 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 Being honest, I understand. Man. <laughs> I understand. Cause I was worried about that with IG when we first started too. I was just like, oh shit, I gotta keep the hair fresh every day. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. But, <laughs> you know, man. Well, so, here, but, yeah, I, like we've to, been watching you from afar. You know, oh. like enjoying the brills and stuff that you've been posting. You know, Thank enjoying the comedy. So before we even close out, I want to allow you the opportunity to, like, plug anything that you got going on, like events and uh, maybe concerts or shows that you got upcoming as well. And also, I've got to tell people, 
you know, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Positive Vibes, maybe. Uh, we see the numbers going up. And also a shout out to our official sponsor, T-Shirt Mercenary, you know, responsible for, for all PBM logo or merchandise. You guys can purchase y'all T-shirts or just hop in the DM, and, you know, and then we'll take care of y'all. But, Alan, take it away. <laughs> um, yeah, so... I mean, anybody listening to this, um, follow me. My things down there is it's my name, Alan Massenberg. Um, follow me on there, man. I post all my shows I'm doing. Um, I run a bunch of shows. So, like, tomorrow night I got a show in, I'm in Brooklyn. I do most of my stuff in Brooklyn, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, just follow me. I post everything. I'm in, Bro I'm, I'm in Philly. I'm coming, back. I'm coming back to Philly June 30th. I'm going to be at the Helium Comedy Club on June 30th. Okay. So, um that's the next time I'll be back and be back in the city. But yeah, follow me on Alan Massenberg. Um, my my business, Mass Hysterical, is in my my bio and my podcast, Property Bonics. The link to all that is in my bio. Everything is there. So just fo follow me and uh, keep up with me. I appreciate y'all. I really do, man. Yeah, we appreciate you. And thank you for joining us today, too. Like, yeah, man. Anytime, man. Thank you. For your time. Yeah. So, what, do I just leave? How's it happen? What happened? Oh, no. So, I was about to say, we <laughs> give, like, a lasting word for each episode of how we run on that episode, and we talk about, like, you know, what about the conversation stood out to us, any lasting words we want to leave with the people, and then we, you know, we separate ties from there. So, I can start off first, and then you can, you know, join, and then Daddy yeah, can finish us off. You know, All right. And then round us about. So, my lasting words for today's episode is going to be trust in the people that you call your friends you know like you're they're your friends for a reason and if you decide you want to become business partners trust in that relationship trust in that dynamic and allow them to be the best versions of themselves you know it's no point of partnering with a friend if you're going to micromanage every step that they take but you also have to be mindful that this is a business and you know with business comes that responsibility so with that responsibility you also well with that responsibility be mindful that this is also your friend in the process so keep that line right. clear but concise gotcha all right so my my last thing my last thing thing i want to say is one thing that you said man you said that like diversify the friendship so it's like don't when it comes to business like you got to have people from different aspects of life. You don't need all comedians or all rappers to be a part of a project. The diversifier so you can see an idea from different angles, different perspectives. Like that, like for me, like that was powerful for me to hear because like it was like you're 100% right. You know what I'm saying? And it makes sense too because like, like, like I explained to y'all, a lot of my business circle ain't comedians. And they're not comedians. So yeah, I, I think that people should listen to that and like take heed to that advice. Like when you start in any bit, anything you start, you start in a podcast, you start in anything. You should have opinions from every walk of life. You know what I'm saying? Don't just go straight to all your homies from your block. Like you don't need seven, seven perspectives from the same dude on 55th Street. You know what I'm saying? You need different, you know what I mean? Different ideas. So yeah, that's what I would like to say coming out. Yeah. Sure. Sure. For sure. You know what I mean? That's funny. I was about to say my last and John is on diversify your Pokédex. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, listen. That was a spot oh, on. Like... Spot on. That was spot on. That was, and that's real key to business. Key to business. Key to life. Key to everything. You know. Yeah. yeah. Diversify the group around you. All right. Facts. You know what I mean. Alabaster Bird, thank you once again. We appreciate you, King. We wish you nothing but success, more business, more bags, and more, well, your mom's in the room, but, you know, other B words. <laughs> <as well>. <laughs> <laughs> that work in conjunction to blessings. Let's put it that way. <laughs> My mom is older than us. She grown, grown. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, appreciate y'all, man. So, of course, of course, of Thank course. You. Sunday, Sunday, this Sunday, 7 p.m., same time, same place. Join us on IG Live. I go to the name of Jetty A Track. I'm Dash Smith, and this is Positive Vibes, maybe. Alan, thank you. <laughs> thank y'all, man. Enjoy the rest of your night. All right, you, you too, too. Right, Peace.
Peace. Mm-hmm.